Hi everyone, it's Dancy and I am finally back recording a podcast. I think my last one was recorded the beginning of October. Um, a lot of life has happened since then. Um, quite a lot of finished objects. I think there was 14, 14 or 15. Um, I've been making a conscious effort to finish up whips, get things sorted. So yeah, I'm going to do the normal format. I'm not going to share any acquisitions with you, I don't think, because there has been a few. Um, but again, I'm trying to get better at not um, buying so much yarn because I have too much. Also, you have got a slightly different view. Today, um, I am in the midst of sorting out my craft room and that has entailed uh, moving bits around so I am in front of my shore wall so this is my I think these are all Stephen West yes this is my Stephen West shore wall um, hanging up here so it's a little bit of bright colour um, I am also wearing my Radvent cardigan um, and this is using the discreet unicorn um, advent from 2021 yeah, pretty sure it's 2021 Advent. Um, and I love it. Uh, so it fades in in two different ways. And then there's yellow on the back. Um, I also have got the contrasting buttons. Um, as you know, I have got another one of these cast on. Um, I am going to make it slightly different by not doing the really wide rib at the bottom. Um, and just change it up a bit. Uh, I'm also doing a mirrored fade as well. But anyway, I'm now talking about whips. So yes, that is what I am wearing. So yes, as I said, uh, life has been lifing and um, I have been able to get some stuff finished because unfortunately I have been off work. Um, the really good news is that I have my surgery next week. So this will mean the kidney stone that has been part of my life for the last year will be departing uh, and I am not sad to see him go so uh yeah i thought i'd get this filmed up before um we've got advent coming up have toyed with doing vlogmas i don't think i will because i'm gonna be off work still and i don't know what i'm gonna be that exciting but i might might put a little video up or some some bits on instagram um, about my advents so let's make a start on these finished objects um I've got them kind of piled up around here so I'm just going to kind of grab um, and share with you. So I did uh, share with you the start of this which was the Haunted House Cowl from Tiff, no, from Stephanie Lotman, Telly Bean Knits um, and I think when I showed you I'd kind of got up to day three. So this was the first 13 days of October and it's one of her bandana cowls um, so you've got like your textured stitches here at the top because you're doing that flat and then the colour work is in the round so we've got bats uh, eyeballs pumpkins these are fangs um, this is the only part where my contrast didn't work very well um, so yeah I mean you can see them close up but they're not that contrast contrast is not great We've then got ghosts, we've got some tombstones, and then sort of poison bottle, skull and crossbones. So yeah, really love how this has come together. I said you do join. It's actually, I was talking about it being worried that it's too going to be too tight to wear, um, but it actually worked out okay. I'm going to see if I can get it on over my glasses and my earrings. Urgh. There we go. So... As you can see, it sits up kind of quite nice and close to the neck and then you can rearrange sort of the bib part of it um, to kind of show the different patterns. Yeah, really happy with how it all worked out. And this is the first time I've done two-handed colour work completely in one project. Um, and it actually, it looked really sloppy. Um, before I blocked it and then I'm really happy 
with how it blocked out how neat it came out so yes that is my haunted house um m cow bandana cow okay <clears throat> uh, another cow i've got sitting here and this was a helen stewart pattern um it's a free pattern it was a scrappy um i think she just calls it her scrappy cow and i grabbed a load of minis uh, they're already balled up that I had left over I think from swaps when I was doing my cosy memories blanket and it's an eyelet design and I did use a blue on either end they are different blues and then just picked at random I also rush and joined all of these so was able to just you know weave in two ends Again, it's a really nice size, sits really nice, you can double fold it if you want as well. Uh, I'm definitely going to cast on another one of these. I have been sorting out uh, my minis, which I will show you when um, we look at whips. But yeah, I really like this, and this is, it's really nice just to wear. I've been wearing this a lot in the house, because uh, I'm quite stationary, sitting down a lot. So, yes, I kind of quite like houses and it's messed up my hair a little bit. So, yes, um, I recommend that pattern. As I say, it was free. Um, it's not free anymore, but yeah, it's a, I mean, it's an eye look out. It wouldn't be that difficult to work out. Right, let's go on to. I've got two blanket finishes. Um, and these, the first one, I mean, the both blankets you've seen, the first one is my Halloween. The Boo Blanket from Rosina Payne. I think I'd showed you up to kind of where I'd done this. I will, if I remember, put a picture in here so you can see the full thing. I have posted it on my Instagram. Uh, and then this is the top part where you've got bats, skull bats, you've got brooms. I did my brooms in a slightly different colour. The bottom of the brooms are supposed to be purple. I didn't really like how that looked. And then you've got these fabulous cauldrons. So, finished it, then put the envelope border on. I'm sorry, the colour went a bit funny then. The envelope border, um, which was a mission, but it just really finished the blanket off perfectly. Um, it's a really warm blanket because it's that double thickness. I say on the reverse, you've got like the double layers um so yeah really great pattern really love doing that and said it was nice finished it in time for halloween okay let's do the mcal so i spoke about my colors briefly um in the last uh podcast of course if you follow along anything on social media and anything in the knitting community, you know there was a lot of controversy around um, this MCAL. I'm not going into it, it's been done to death. But um, I had finished my first clue before um, everything happened. So I did just put that to one side and then start again from the pattern he released. Um, I haven't, I'm putting tassels on mine. No, yeah, tassels, not fringing. And what I've done is I've wound the yarn off of my first square so the first version I did um, and that's sitting all crinkly so I need to make up the tassels soak them so they straighten out and then I'll attach them um, I also ended up adding different colours to my MCAL so I added um, I went with the, the purple black ones I then added green and orange and pink I did do a mohair deer and I added sequins so we basically chucked a bit of everything at the show again I have shared this on my Instagram if you do follow um, so this was the second part of the clue the you know the second version I have added sequins in to some of that design I then added mohair and this was a pink mohair out of my stash from Siobhan Crafts this orange is one of my favourite oranges it's a poor ply uh, design go he doesn't 
die anymore, but I love that orange. Um, this is the side panels, which I absolutely detested doing, it was just really boring. I did do a pop of orange and I worked mine sort of A, B, C, D, D, C, B, A, so I kind of had a bit of a fade. Uh, and then I added a different border to mine, so ooh, I did bubble stitch, I did a two colour I could bind off, but I did the bubble stitch for my border. Um, I was already concerned about catching the slip stitches on this part. Um, I'm renowned for catching like cardigan pockets, um, shawls onto door handles and various things like that. And I just felt doing the dip stitch border would be tempting fate. So I really like the bubble stitch. Uh, I've done it in hats. Have I done it in a shawl? No, I think I've just done it in socks and... Yeah, socks and hats. But yeah, I really... I like it. I can still get the same gradient effect. It adds a little bit of fun. And I said, I then did the two colour bind off. So I will be adding uh, a tassel to these two ends. Um, it's a nice shape to wear. Um, it's not as big as I like shawls, to be honest. Um, and when it's all kind of scrunched up around your neck, you can't actually see too much of the detail. Um, mine is still flipping round a little bit, um, despite going up a needle size for my Urkel bind off. But yeah, it's fun. It's not my favourite shawl, um, but I finished it. I love the colours. So, yeah, just need to finish that off with the tassels, but um, this past week I got round to ripping out my first um, glue. So my first version of the glue, and um, I'm going to turn that into tassels. Uh, and then it will go up on the shore wall behind me. Okay, now let's go into socks. So... If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I got the Big Knitters Halloween advent. It was a 13-day advent, uh, and I did a reel every day as I opened up um, the bits that came in that. Uh, and it was called Pugsley's Rainbow, uh, as if from Wednesday. Well, the Adams Family, but the Wednesday version that was on Netflix. And I opened a different colour every day. And uh, I am doing three projects with that advent so it was 20 gram mini of sock yarn every day so I have made a pair of mitts a pair of socks and then I'm also doing a cowl as well which I'll show you in my whips so these are my first my first finish of that advent was these mitts and again I just took them from the colors that came out so you got black and white black, white and red, then you've got yellow, pink, love this final one and let me just take that ring off a second um, so these are I've got a long, the cuff on this cardigan is quite long, let me just pull that back so yeah, this is a pair of mitts, this is my go-to pattern for mitts, it's one I've written down um, just basically like a sock tube which you put a thumb gusset in um, and the length that I like it so yeah I got a pair of mitts from the first one two three four five, first six days the black I use this is a cascade um, just black because you can never have too much black yarn in your stash so yeah they were a pair of mitts um, I also then was able to do a pair of socks um, and this was with the next seven days so there is two socks here and again just purely working from the colours that came out uh, so it is a rainbow you know you've got red orange you know the roidy bivs of the rainbow um, which I'm using in my cowl project 
but for these I just pulled them out as they came. Of course, had to weave all the ends in. Again, black cascade for the rest and as I said, this worked out really well. I think I got two, three, 15 rows. So I got 15 rows of each colour on the mitts and these which used 10 grams up and I've got the 10 grams to then go in my cowl that I'm making. So that is those. Right, again I think I'd shown you these. So this was using the Hobby Halloween yarn and this is one of the sparkle, as you can see it's got copper sparkle in. And I would say sitting this way, I know you're getting reflection off my glasses which I can't help because I'm buying the back without them. But I have got the light behind the camera, so the colours are coming out quite well. So, apart from this, because this is neon yellow and they never come out. So yeah, just self-striping sock. There is a pair, but of course I'm not putting each of my blockers. But yes, so really glad I got those finished. Uh, I'm not sure if I shared these with you or not. I think I had. This is a style craft. This is um, head over heels in the Kilimanjaro colourway. Um, and this is the one where I did the chevron pattern. I'll show you on the one that's not the blocker. And again, these are just what I call like my midi socks. And if I show you them this way, then you can see the chevron design with the eyelets in. And it's the first time I've done a chevron pattern on a sock and I really like it I'll definitely do it again especially for a free yarn what hasn't got even stripes so yes that was another pair of socks uh, again I'd shown you these as well these are my fluffy socks inspired by my friend Sue who I've then inspired to do a pair as well uh, and this is using a grey it's got sparkle in it um, colour and the uh, fluff. Uh, Sue has then since said about rather than knitting, purling this yarn because then you get more of the fluff on the outside because I did spend a fair bit of time picking the fluff through to the right side of the sock but I'm really happy with how they came out and they'll be really fun. Just with a pair of trainers. So yeah really like that so that's another pair and my last pair of socks again when I have been going through all my whips and trying to narrow down I have frogged quite a bit as well uh, I was really good at just thinking am I actually going to finish this do I like this um, and I'd actually finished one of these socks and this is the painting honeycomb sock from Stephen West from his Euro socks and this is kind of where I stopped the Euro socks um, I did do his mystery sock along the contrast blast I have ripped those out um, the sizing just didn't work for me I kind of done one size when it was too big and I think the size below would have been too tight so um, I'm probably going to revisit that pattern but at the moment I've ripped the yarn out um, I think I'm actually going to make a pair of Dustland mitts with them but so yeah this main colour here is a older yarn from my stash it is a poor ply designs and said he doesn't dye anymore but really nice variegated and it's a nice variegated that hasn't pulled and then i've done the honeycomb section using brown and this brown was from kartopu yarn so that was hobium so yeah there is a pair of those slightly taller leg um and i just do the patterning on the top because anything on the top of the foot in my shoe would really annoy me but I do like the interest of it sticking out uh, I do need to wet block these just so it keeps that section um, blocked out right let me just put my sock blockers there and hope that we don't have some kind of landslide because that's been happening in here recently Right, we've got three, four, three or four more finishes uh, to do. 
so I'm looking here because um, I have a co-host that you can't see <laughs> um, and this is my friend Stephen uh, as you'll know if you've watched this channel I have uh, two small skeletons called Skelly and Anton uh, I then introduced you to Pumpkin Pete last time and this is Stephen and this is what happens when you go to the supermarket the day after Halloween and they have all the Halloween items reduced it was very good and came out with not that much could have come out with much much more uh, but yes this is <laughs> Stephen he is the size basically of a toddler he's about a metre tall I did buy him a pair of shoes because I haven't got around to making him socks I didn't want him having cold feet so the first thing I made him on the day I got him was this hat and this is using a scrap of self striping sock yarn and I literally just put a sock on his head and worked out if that would fit him and then just made a tiny little hat um, and then he had to wait a bit longer then to get his sweater um, <laughs> so this uh, the numbers I used for this is from the Strange Brew book this is a 0 to 3 months sizing uh, I did in DK um, it's a little bit big for him because of course he doesn't have any flesh on his bones um, so yeah it's a little bit big but it's going to keep him warm this winter um, and he has since now requested that I do make him a Stephen West shawl to wear of course this is Stephen named after the namesake um, so yes, I'm going to make him a, a shawl to go with this. But this has got a simple bit of colour work. I did do my striped ribbing, which I am just loving at the moment. And this was all just scraps from my stash. These are just... I think these are probably all Stylecraft. And this was a Lily Bee um, blue that I had in my stash. So yes, that is Stephen who got a hat and a jumper. Um, he will of course eventually get Christmas jumpers and things like that but not right now. So let me just sit him back up here. Um, so yeah he is, I just turn this around slightly you can see, oh no it's not gonna let me spin it. Here you go, Stephen is sitting, sitting there. Right, oh no, I probably messed up the camera angle now. Okay, let's do the last two. So the last predominant one is a blanket. And this is the Sweet Pea Blanket by Lucy of Attic24. Um, this is massive. I forgot how big her blankets are. This one is even bigger because I realised after week two I changed my hook size I went up half a hook size um, as I said to you when I was doing this last time I really struggled when it got to this lighter section because um, yeah it just got really boring I might try and put a photo in here because you'll see it better because it is massive and at the moment I mean I've been using it in here but it is just curled up I did do a different border uh, because I ran out of yarn because I had gone up a hook size I didn't have enough so I've just done a two yeah two, th three colour border but crab stitch as well so yeah really happy that that one is done um not going to show my acquisitions but I have got her another blanket her new blanket pack for the cow starting in January as well uh, but really like that I just love her blankets and as you know I a one to blanket stack that's what my podcast was about last time and in changing this room around um, I am going to under my shawl wall here have a big stack of blankets so my final finished object is one that has caused me a lot of stress um, I have said I'm going to finish it I've said I'm never going to finish it uh, and then I picked it up and worked on it solidly for a week um, I don't like it I'm going to be honest with you, I don't like it. Um, no, I do like it. It's not sure what I wanted. So originally um, I cast this on the 1st of August. 
2022 with my Zoomy friends and we're all going to make it as our Christmas sweater. Of course, last December, uh, very beginning of December, um, I felt ill with passing my first kidney stone, which has then led to this year-long saga. And I put it aside and didn't work on it. Um, many of my Zoom friends had finished it and they weren't 100% happy with their finished item. Um, and so I was like, yeah, I'm going to finish it. No, I'm not. Then I picked it up and I tried it on. So... In the time that I have cast this on, I have lost weight, uh, so it is bigger than what I would need now. But the yoke pattern just doesn't work. Um, the bottom, so this, sorry, this is the what is, what is that? What is that sweater? What is this? What is this sweater? It's a Megan Regan pattern. Um, I've knit her patterns before. Um, I did mine out of Aran weight. Um, so maybe if I'd done out of DK it would have been different, but I don't know. So this is got um, the motifs on and then you've got the big jack skeleton face. And this is where I have the problem with this chart design. Because you've got, I think it's about 20, 25, 26 odd rows with no increases. So you've got increases all here. I think you do one increase below it but because you've got such a large section with no increases it literally like shelves down and it doesn't fit great like I said already oversized I could probably have taken out three of these skull heads of this pattern um, so I was talking with my zoom friends quite disillusioned <laughs> with it um, but then we decided that I should just make it oversized and make it a massive baggy jumper which then meant I had to knit 16 inches of stockinette which was not fun they put up with a lot of my moaning I haven't woven my ends in on this yet either I'm going to block it just in the washing machine the bit that I did alter from the pattern and is my favourite part of it is that I did stripe sleeves so I was going to have lots of yarn left from this I said it's all Aran um, acrylic or wool acrylic mix so this can just go in the washing machine and yeah I mean I will put some pictures on my Instagram when I have washed and blocked it I'm not going to get that done before my surgery so um, but yeah it is warm it kind of comes to like my mid thigh um it's still really big and baggy around there's too there's too much fabric here there's a bit of a weird hump going on at the back but um as the guys in the zoom said the weight of it will help pull it down i think when i've then washed and blocked it that will help it settle as well but that is my massive christmas sweater uh which i'm happy is finished and I think I love wearing it because it will be so warm and cosy but it was just a bit disheartening really just having another sip of coffee um as you know I love my coffee this is the Nespresso coffee and this is the seasonal delights which smells like cherry tunes it's like it got a very strong cherry scent to it but I put a little bit of um this has got maple donut syrup in it, which kind of takes it down a level. I mean, it's very sweet, you know. It's sweet flavoured coffee, which is not for some people, but some days that's what you want. So I do have, I've made a couple more hats on my Addy. Um, so they're in the bag to go to charity. And I've also made a shawl. Um, using some James C. E. Brett Northern Lights yarn that was in my stash and I made that for my aunt um, but stupidly didn't take a picture before I posted it um, but that used just under 300 grams worth of yarn it was just a big granny stitch shawl so yes I think that is all my finished objects so what I'm now going to do is sort out this space and then I'm going to talk you through my whips and my new cast-ons. So bear with me while I try and sort this out without a landslide happening. <laughs> 
one sec. Right, so I'm back after having a shift around and I think I've got all of my active whips. Um, I think I've got, including blankets, 21 whips currently. Beginning of November I had 30. Uh, I have frogged some of those projects as well. So I'm doing well. I don't think I'm going to get below... Let's say if I can try and get below 15 going into the new year, including blankets. I don't know, we'll see. Um, I am planning on doing a video in December about my plans for next year. Because next year there's going to be changes because of course I'll have had my surgery. Fingers crossed everything goes well. Uh, I'm starting a new job. Um, got a different commute. Lots of different things happening. So yeah, I've got some plans and of course my knitting time is not going to be as abundant as it has been. Um, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again, you know, knitting and especially my group of Zoom friends are the ones that have really helped me. Um, especially in the last couple of months where it's been really difficult. Um, they've been absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, my knitting time and everything is going to take a massive hit. Um, but I'm kind of looking forward to life getting back to some kind of normality for me. But also, I'm going to miss my knitting. So, let's see if we can whiz through these whips because I don't want a really, really long video. So, I'm just going to grab a project bag and let's go. Ooh. So, <clears throat> and then again, we've just had a small landslide of project bags. So, um, living in my Buzz Lightyear um, project bag, it's not a project bag, it's a clutch bag from a regular choice, but it's my project bag. Uh, this is the Halloween cow from Big Knitters. Um, and as I, I think I've mentioned, I think I mentioned it on my Instagram, because the socks are knit on a small gauge, you've got that micro stripe in. Uh, I am knitting this, uh, I'm doing, basically doing the litmus cow numbers for this. And I'm getting, let me just see if I can untwist that needle. There we go. I'm getting these amazing <laughs> like big flashes um, so it's going to be really abstract and really cool I've I'm literally just um, added the orange in I am knitting this on a 16 inch um, one with a that 3.25 likey um, three inch tips but yes so yeah I love it this is completely different to how um, it knit up in the socks and I think it's going to be rather abstract looking and cool and we'll also go with most outfits in here I've got all of the balls wound ready to go as I said they're all um, the 10 grams that are left if I need a little bit more room in the litmus cow I'm just going to do black and white stripes um, you know section of it so that is in that um i think this is the one i'm going to take with me when i go to the hospital because it's just round and round so i don't know how long i'm going to have to wait before my surgery i am there very early in the morning so but the thought of sitting around not with, with nothing to do when i could be knitting so that one will come with me um okay so this is living in a project bag from Hannah, Hannah's Happy Space. Um, and in here, I think I showed these before. These are the only pair of socks I have on the needles currently. Um, not casting on any just yet. I want to, but just not yet. Uh, and these are the Regia colorway. And like I said, this is the one that is quite Christmassy. Um, I think it looks Christmassy. Uh, I'm going to do this a slightly longer leg. I think I'm going to do this 50 stitch leg. Uh, this little avocado marker is just marking where I finish my ribbon. Because I find if I'm not doing a contrast rib, I need to put stitch marker because that's I count my rows. I don't measure. I just count rows. These are being knitted on the Addy Unicorn needles. Uh, I'm not going to do any contrast um, with this, so I'll just go into... I think I'll probably do a shallow wrap heel because that's what I'm just enjoying at the moment and get those finished. Uh, as I said, that's just living 
in my bag from Hannah at the Happy Space. It's nice because it's a little, it's a good one because it just hangs and doesn't take up too much room for a pair of socks. Okay, this is a new cast on. I've done this this week. Uh, this is for the Arnie and Carlos advent um, stocking they're doing. So they're doing a pattern where they release six colours of six rows of colour work every day to make a stocking. It's free on Ravelry, um, and then after Christmas it will not be free. So you have to do the toe beforehand, and it's a toe up sock because this is like old school how I learned to make socks was toe up. So I did Ginny, Judy, one of those people's magic cast on, where you figure eight it over the needles, and then I've just done an increase. And I do have a little Father Christmas stitch marker on there. Um, so yeah, this is ready to go. They've said, you know, get your toe done for the 1st of December. So that is what I have done. And that was just in a, a green from my stash. I don't know what that is. Um, and then my red and white. Oh, here we go. I've got a label. Uh, that is a Valley's Yarn green. And then I've got two... Peyton's wool DK um, and they are in oh, let me put this down see landslide they're in this tiny little project bag I made and also while I was looking I found that I have this little um, pamphlet it's a patterns one which I think must have been when I got that wool I must have brought it as a kit um, and this is the one that has 25 different bauble designs in um, so I'm going to keep this in this project bag because you know if I've got some yarn left you never know much that but that's basically prepped and ready to go um, for the beginning of December uh, I'm not um, I've got all my advents so all my advents have now been received um, all what do we work out eight of them um, I haven't set them up yet, that's something I'm going to do before I go into hospital next week. Um, I'm not planning, currently, not planning on doing any project with those because I want to look at the colours that come out and plan like how it will work. I've done projects before where I just take out as it comes and there's always a couple of colours that maybe sit together that you're not 100% happy with. So. Yes, Advents, no plan to do an Advent project as per se. I've got Advent patterns cast on currently, um, but that one, I just think it's fun. Six rows of colour work a day, make a Christmas stocking at the end of it. So, as I said, I do have um, some colour work patterns cast on. Just, i say, because I've had a bit of a landslide here, I don't know if I'm going to be able to grab. So I think it was just before the beginning of November, um, I pulled out loads of minis and I ended up winding over a hundred minis in the space of a week. And it was a lot of work. It's very annoying. Some minis were easier to wind than others because I wanted to cast on a couple of projects and also use up some previous advents. So this box came my truly hooked advent came in this last year but I've also got my green lampkin advent from 2021 so in here they are all wound into little gobstopper balls and they're all ready to go and these are being used for a Ste the Stephen West painting waves cow um, and I made this with my advent I think it was 2021 no, it wasn't because that's got green lampkin in, so it must have been 2020. Um, and for my main colour, I'm just using this grey um, solid from... That's an opal. Um, and as I said, I've made this cow before. It's, it's a really easy cow, it's really easy and memorable. Um, and I'm just using a truly hooked and then the green lampkin, all green lampkin ones were sparkly and this is basically a feather and fan design 
uh, you just cast on, you don't do a provisional cast on, you just cast on and then mattress stitch it at the end once you've blocked it. Um, and I'm just picking the colours out randomly. Um, but yeah, it's a really, it's one of those cows I wear so much in the winter because it's a double wrap cow, you just chuck it around your neck and you know, you're sorted and it keeps you lovely and warm. Um, and just inside you can tie, you know, tie your ends together, you don't have to weave them in. Um, I do have, ooh, my spangly boobs um, stitch marker. That came from Yarnistry. I do love a pair of spangly boobs on a project. Um, I do put stitch markers on here just every repeat, just because it means I don't have to tink back, you know, the whole thing if I mess up and you know by the end you by the time you've got to the end of one round you kind of know where you're at so I cast this on the first of November with my minis and I'll again I'll pick that up again this week to start working on um, and what I did last year was I I no not last year the year 2020 I mattress stitched it then blocked it I'm thinking this time I'll block it, then mattress stitch it. But yeah, it's a great fun project. It's really, it's really simple, but really effective and really good. So these were using 10 gram minis and each of these strips is using about four grams. So I'm gonna have lots of leftovers from that that can go into other projects. Um, and this is living in, um, I think this was a Jibby Resos. Yep, Jibby Resos bag with this fabulous Fat Babes fabric. I've got a couple of project bags in that. But yes, so that was one um, advent project. Another is living in this, which is another Jibby Resize bag. I'm thinking I might change some to my Christmas bags, but most of mine will just live in Halloween bags. And this is using the Kushlig um, wrap pattern, which is now no longer available which is annoying but I have it in my library I've got it because um Denise from Denise Dear had like Denise Designs had sorry Denise from Dear Designs had made it uh, and I was talking to her about it and I was like I really like that but could you join it together to make it a cow I'm all about this convenience thing that I like to be able to I like my shawls and I'm really lucky I've got some fabulous shawl cuffs from Mandy um which means they stay on because I find you know, when at work, when I'm teaching, you're leaning over kids at desks and stuff like that, you don't want like shawls flopping off. So I'm quite a fan of a cowl because they stay around your neck. So I went through my stash and I had some, last year I made my anthology throw using um, James Makes Things um, yarns. And I had some left over from his advent, 12 day advent I got last year, and then some left over from the Kaleidoscope Club. I did for him. So again, I had a great time of winding all those minis up. These are all 20 gram minis. Um, I did have to supplement a couple more because I didn't quite have enough. And so the yarns that I've got to subst you know, subsize these with is these two um, from is it Chelsea Yarns. So I've got those two, and then I've got this one from Somerset Yarns. So that's going to go in with them. I haven't wound those up yet because I pulled them from my stash. And so this, I think it's got about six days in. Sorry, let me just unwind my yarn here. So this is my Kushlig. And I've now got the pattern memorised. Um, and I am just picking at random. I'm trying to be random. You know when you try to be random, you're not random at all. But I'm trying, you know, to just go with it. I mean, there's not the utmost contrast between those two on the camera. But there is in real life. Um, so, yeah. I will then be joining this together to make a cowl. Um, and, yeah, this one uses 25 so there's a real mixture so I've got it on two sets of needles um, because you're basically leaving live stitches um, and then picking them up 
you know, on the other side. And I'm using the needles for this are um, 3.75. Need to sort out how this has been stored in my yarn bag. And I'm using two sets of Likey needles, and they've just got Mickey Mouse stoppers on. So that's another advent project that I'm going to pick up again and work on. So that, as I said, was using minis from an advent and minis from um, a club that I did in 2021. 2022? I don't know, whenever I did them. Um, then me and my Zoomy friends were talking about other patterns and uh, we were talking about a blanket pattern. It then ended up with a lot of our um, Zoom group ooh, casting on this pattern. And this is the Rain and Shine. It's called the Rain and Shine blanket from Stephen West. Um, I don't have a whole blanket <laughs> yet, but it's like the slip stitch design. And again, I am using uh, mini. So this is using two finger and weight held together. Um, I'm using a big grey cone of acrylic that I got from Woolly Knits that is sitting in my skull bag and then this is a cake that I have Russian joined loads of minis together these are all um, Lay Family yarn minis that I got from one of her scrappy bags at East Anglia Yarn Fest and there's about 200 and, there's about 220 grams in this cake and I just went through Russian joining them doing them up so um as you can see i've only got sort of two colors in um definitely gonna pick this up again it's a great memorable pattern and just holding that with the gray uh not sure how big i'm gonna make it um i'm just gonna see how it goes because i've got enough scraps that i can put another cake together of you know joined ones but I have just put it in this bag because that means that cone can sit in there uh, and I can knit out of that because that's the only problem with a cone of yarn is knitting from it. Um, if I show you here, this is one I've got lined up for another project but this is the size of the cone. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a pain but putting it in this bag and I said this was a bag that I made using Sizzlet Designs and I love this bag. Okay. And then last two projects to talk to you about are blankets as well. So you have seen this blanket many times. So this is my 2022 dye candy neon fade blanket. And I did say in my last podcast I was wanting to pick it up uh, and start working on it in November. And that is what I have done. I think when you last saw it, it was around this part. So just going into the green. So I've gone through the green, the blue, and now sort of going into the purple, which will then go into the pink. I think month-wise, um, I'm just putting the last one of October in. No, the first one of October in. Yeah, the first one of October in because I've got five um, 50 gram cakes left to go in this. So, this is ooh, where this blanket is at, and this is my next priority to finish. Um, sort of this week, I've worked on getting the Christmas sweater finished, uh, so now my priority is to get that. If I'm sitting and just working on that, I can put at least 50 grams in a day, so it has got about another week's worth of work on it. But of course, with surgery and stuff coming up, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to be at with that. Um, and then my final whip I'm going to share with you is my Christmas mosaic blanket. Um, this pattern is completely out now, um, and I was going to try and keep up, but, but then I decided to mix two blankets together. So Rosina Payne, who I did the boo blanket from, she released a Christmas blanket this year called Sonia's Holiday, and a portion of that money went to charity. Um, but I decided to mix up with the Ho 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 blanket. So I've taken charts from the two different blankets to use. 
Um, and fabulously enough, I'm also doing this with my niece. So my niece is doing um, a mosaic crochet blanket as well because that's what she's working on. Um, this is an acquisition. My little ghost bucket that came from TK Maxx is holding all of the colours for this. And this is all yarn smiths yarn from Wool Warehouse. So this is where I am at so far. So I've got a paper chain, a Santa, then got holly, and then Christmas trees. So the paper chain and the Christmas trees are from the Sonia's Holiday, and the others are from the Ho Ho Ho. So of course I need to get a wiggle on this because it is Christmas and me and my niece were having a bit of a competition to see who could do it um, first. She has done her Santas as well. So this is going to be a project I think I might do a little bit of this later maybe um, to work on. But again, mosaic crochet so I want that finish to have out at Christmas. Um, yeah, I'm just looking around. And I think that is everything. Yep, everything I've actively been working on. So yes, um, as I mentioned throughout this, you know, there is life changes and stuff coming up. Uh, I've got my surgery next week, um, which, you know, I swim from being fine with to melodramatic about... You know, and again, my Zoom friends have been very tolerant of me being melodramatic. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm going to kind of plan nothing too strenuous for next week, really. Uh, I want to get my Advent set up, um, my Christmas decorations set up in here, uh, which kind of meant I needed to do a bit of a tidy in here. Ended up buying a bookcase, um, which was going to sit in here, which I think I'm on landslide number seven. At the moment I'm trying to sort this room out so I've just gone through stuff I've got a couple of piles of stuff I'm going to donate uh, a couple bits to send to friends so hopefully I can get this room sorted so when I am you know out of hospital I mean I'm only in for a day case um you know everything goes fine I'll be out that day uh, but I just wanted to come in and make sure I've got all my advent set up ready um got my Christmas decoration up. I mean I've got some fairy lights up here that hang off my um my planters that hang up anyway um, so I've added those but they're going to stay up all year round so uh, and what I probably will do as I said on my Instagram will share a little bit of my spooky slash Christmas set up in here but there's still some tidying to do there's still some vacuum packing of yarn to do um, because my shelf unit that I've got here which has got mainly my acrylic stash on um, a few of the um, vacuum bags have expanded um, and therefore have like wedged into the shelf space so I just need to have a little bit of a sort of that um, so I can get a couple of these yarn packs back where they should be because as I've pulled them out others have expanded so as I said I'm going to try and have another podcast out before the end of this year which will just talk about my plans going forward um, as I said I was originally thinking of doing vlogmas but then when the date my surgery came through, that wasn't really going to work. So, yeah, I'll probably just put some bits on Instagram of me with my different advents and various things to do. But, yeah, so the real plan is to try and get down to 15 whips to take into next year, of which will be, hopefully, five of those will be blankets. So ten other whips, five blankets is my plan. So hopefully I'll be able to update you on where I am with that. So I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. Hopefully it's not been too rushed and the lighting's not been too dodgy. Like I said, I'm aware there's a reflection on my glasses, but this is the best way I could get light in in this thing. I randomly just looked out of the window and a heron was flying over. Did for a second think it might be a pterodactyl, but it's not. It's a heron. So yes, <laughs> random. And this is why I shouldn't sit looking out the window because I get distracted. So yep, um, my plan is we'll hopefully get this edited and up today or tomorrow. Um, and yes, I will speak to you all before the year's out. But everyone, enjoy your start of Advents if you're doing that. Um, and I will catch up with you all very, very soon. Bye!